So today I'm going to talk about rich curvature of tensors. I put tensors here, and then now remaining quantity. Now in Riemannian geometry, okay. So first of all, let's yeah, can, yeah, in Riemannian geometry. Yeah, for Riemannian metrics, right? And we have a so-called Riemannian curvature tensor. Okay, this is a Riemannian curvature tensor, okay? And uh, the Riemannian curvature tensor has many properties. Okay, uh, the book called the Bianca identities. Okay, so using those Bianca identities, uh, and then uh, we have a, uh, uh, yeah, we have this. We have some several identities. Okay, then uh, <coughs> we have the so-called. Uh, this is a Riemannian curvature. Okay. We simply call it Riemann curvature tensor. Okay, then um, we find out if I take the average. Okay, and this one I'm going to uh, uh, this yeah this is just depends on x. Okay, so this is a rich curvature tensor. This well known rich curvature tensor. Okay. Using the Bianca D, the rich curvature tensor can be also expressed as follows. Instead of, uh, uh, yeah, so uh, what I do is I, I take average on, um, on these two indexes instead of uh, IK and GL. Okay, so this will be called rich IK X. This is also rich tensor, okay? Now the relationship between these two, uh, use Bianca and Dendi, it's the same, okay? It's simple. All I have to do is just reach, okay? And uh, IJ is going to be, yeah, both are functions of X actually. It's going to be I M uh, uh, reach M J. Okay, so you can uh, uh, you can check that, but you have it's not trivial. It's not directly that equal. So you have to use a uh, 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 Bianca identity to prove that. Okay, because okay, the so left hand side. Look at the left hand side. Okay, I am reach M J. Okay, this is going to be J I M. Okay. And uh, and uh, J, right? And J L. Uh, let's use uh, uh, this in the J L. Yeah. Let's use this one and the reach uh, remaining curvature. Here's M J. Uh, well, I shouldn't use a. Uh, I should use K here. Okay, J. Uh, All right, so uh, so this is a uh, you see right, and uh, okay, and uh, and uh, first of all, in the manager you know, if you use this two first, then that will be J L R, and you pull the index down to so J I K L. Okay, now using the using the uh, Bianca identity, I think. Yeah, this can be, this two can be exchanged. Okay. This two can be exchanged. So you will get JJL and RKLJI. Okay. Then, then you change the index uh, uh, LK and IL. Okay. So, So this is a, 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 a nothing but uh, some definition here. You see, this is a, right? Okay. So this is going to be uh, the rich, actually the rich KI, okay? Right? And uh, and uh, you can also, uh, uh, you know, if if you want, you can change the index. You pull the K up. Okay, this is a KM, 
Okay, JL reach, uh, uh, here's a M L I. Okay, do I have a two L's here? I'm confused. This is a, 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 a J here. Okay, so you will see that this is a, I just want to prove the left hand side equals the right hand side, which is a key identity we use here. Okay, so this is a going to be uh, uh, this part is K. Okay. So actually, you, you then uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, and you you pull the index down and the Ki, and also you have to use a uh, uh, symmetry of the rich curvature tensor. Okay. So this is the left hand side, and this is the, the one begin with the begin with the right hand. Side. The key 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 identity we use this. Okay, these two are equal. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> yeah, but that's not true in general in the things that for, for the thin symmetry. Okay. All right, so that is a, a quick review on the main geometry, and uh, I forgot how. Yeah, the cur rich curvature tensor. Yeah, this is a. a Yeah, K I I K. Okay, so okay, yeah, that's our rough idea. Anyway, they're equal. Okay, now uh, for the Finsler metric. Okay. Oh, by the way, so for the remainder metric, um, we have two versions of expression for rich coverage tensor. Before we uh, before we study Finster metric, let's look at uh, yeah we express the tensor as a scalar function. Okay, so this quadratic in the y variable. Okay, at every point. So you have uh, this function, and then, then it's easy to see that reach i j is also is going to be the Hessian y i y j. Okay, so that is a that's what <coughs> in the remaining geometry. Okay. Now we can see the fin symmetric. Yeah, we can see the fin symmetric. Okay, so in thin symmetric, uh, we try to avoid using uh, connection at the very beginning. So we have the uh, Riemann uh, uh, curvature tensor, R I K. Okay, so this is a, a function of X and Y, and Y is the direction of the vector. Okay. And this is defined independent of any connections. Okay. Okay. So, so how do we define the rich curvature tensor? Uh, we find out uh, at the earlier times there was only one possible natural notion. Okay. So that is going to be the rich. Just take an average of. A, <coughs> okay. This is a, the sum of a. Okay. So this can be viewed as the remaining curvature tensor can be viewed as uh, uh, can be viewed as uh, <coughs> as a linear transformation. Okay, yeah, the linear transformation. So for any uh, at any point, right? This is a Riemann I K uh, and uh, X Y. Uh, no, this is a K, yeah. K. Okay, so this is well defined in each other. So the so called rich curvature is just a trace of RY. There's a sum of eigenvalues. Every transformation has eigenvalues, the sum of eigenvalues, the average value of the average value of the eigenvalues. Uh, now, the sum of all the eigenvalues, okay? Not the average, the sum of all the 
eigenvalues of R1, okay? So this pretty natural definition, okay? And that reach, it's a scale function just like what we did here. Then the next step is people say, what is rich coach tensor? What is rich coach tensor? Well, there was no way you can define it at this moment. <clears throat> okay. There's no way you can define this moment. Okay. So only possible option is this. Okay. So only option possible at this moment is only a possible option is to define the Hessian. Okay. At this moment, we only have the following possibility. Okay. The only option for, for the so-called rich curvature tensor, if you really want to get a tensor, okay, is, is defined as tension. But it's a bit, I know, to me at the very beginning, it's a, uh, um, I don't feel good about this, okay? Uh, because you have to differentiate, right? Different curvature twice to get another curvature tensor. It's pretty artificial, okay? And there's no choice like that, okay? This is a, so several people use it. Even those people who are trying to extend the <laughs> things that, like, <laughs> uh, uh, through the physics metric geometry uh, to, to general relativity or extend general relativity to the non non cases they have the first thing they have to face is a rich coverage tensor. What is appropriate rich coverage tensor? All right. <clears throat> so this is a, uh, it's not too bad, right? You know, then you have, a, then you have, so far looks like a pretty satisfying. Okay, then you have a rich of this identity. And uh, this sounds like a reasonable, okay? So we, we, we try to get something, why it's, it's pretty reasonable. Okay. So if, okay, uh, F is of isotropic uh, uh, flag curvature, okay? So that means R I K is going to be K, K, K could be a uh, function of X, Okay, the delta i k, I think this will be, <coughs> this will be g k m, uh, g k m y i, uh, this should be divided by f, okay? Right? I must be homogeneous to go up. Okay, then uh, m m, the rich curvature, it's n minus, uh, this is uh, going to be, Wait a minute, did I, uh, this is why M k, so I have F square, okay, sorry. So this will be just the one, okay? And uh, I think I have F square outside, okay? So that would be F square, okay? That's correct enough. Yeah, so remaining coverage tensor is a homogeneous degree two. Okay, so it's F square. All right, so yeah, this is a, uh, so rich coverage must be isotropic in some sense. So this is a reasonable definition. Okay. So sounds okay, right? And this also implies rich ij equals k n minus one gij, okay? Because gij is going to be half of the Hessian, okay? Y i y j, okay? Now, of course, this is a, this two are equivalent. Okay, this two equations. This is a main implies that. So far, it's fine if you talk about in dimensions. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, in physical geometry, you know, we're still dealing with some basic or fundamental problems. <laughs> what are the reasonable rich curvature and uh, and the scalar curvature even right? So. Uh, using this, uh, and uh, and uh, everybody accept uh, this uh, rich coverage, not rich coverage tensor. Okay, why? Because we have, yeah, we have a, a, a important Bonnet-Meyer theorem, right? Uh, 
this is a, I think, bonnet bias there. Okay, it says that if I think this is first approved by by Chen student. Yeah, I I forgot who did it. Okay, so if this is a greater than h, and f square h is positive constant, then the diameter is less than or equal to d, or d is going to be pi over square h. This is the only result without additional condition. <coughs> There's another theorem called the uh, 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 yeah. Volume comparison theorem. Then it involves other uh, non-limit quantity. So this is the only one does not involve any other uh, 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 non-limit quantity. Just purely on the uh, rich identity. Okay. Uh, what else? Yeah, I don't think there's any other results. Uh, does not involve other quantities, non-limit quantities. So this so far it's good. Okay. Of course, you can also say that uh, reach this curvature tensor. This is a symmetric, right? It can exp it can express you that, right? It's the same, right? It's equivalent to same, right? So the diameter is less than or equal to pi over square h. So, so so far we're satisfying the rich curvature tensor, <laughs> okay? But this rich curvature tensor uh, does not show up in any other places. Uh, and that's one place is about um, in field, uh, instant fields equation. Uh, uh, and there use the chunk connection to derive an uh, identity, okay? Uh, 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 fields equa uh, uh, instant fields equation and involves a rich, involves a rich uh, uh, tensor because that's the only rich tensor that they're available to use, okay? So, okay. So this uh, 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 in uh, general theory, Chang and the Li and Li is uh, in the Chongqing uh, uh, Normal University, the okay, Chongqing University. Sorry. Okay. So right now, okay. They're there for the pseudo fin symmetric, right? So what that did is uh, use the same rich. Okay. So the <laughs> they got something like that. Okay. Rich I K minus half of uh, minus half of uh, 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 this is not s coverage I'm going to choose a different number okay ah okay and delta i k I think this will be something something okay now this will be zero for bare word matrix okay uh, and the R here, see, here's a question. What is R, right? R is just equal to J, I, J, reach, I, J, okay? So that is a scalar curvature using that rich curvature tensor. Without rich curvature tensor, you cannot find the scalar curvature, okay? Okay. So, and uh, and the rich I came is going to be G, you know, let's just pull, pull this, uh, So this is a definition, okay? Okay, and the right-hand side is very complicated terms. It's too complicated. I don't want the explanation, but at least that says that, well, uh, for Bell metrics, the right side is vanishes, okay? And, uh, but for the Bell metric, you know, it's uh, it's almost Riemannian at, 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 the, at the curvature level. But that said, that, well, that's uh, the universe is already complicated enough. So that involves, uh, yeah. So there are lots of new models, it's enough to derive. So in the future, there's still a question, what is a rich curvature tensor so that this uh, uh, instant field equation becomes simple, okay? So that's a question, you have to still search for that. Okay, field equation, instance. You know, in the, in John, right, uh, we, we have a motivation, right, to do something. Sometimes this motivation is driving, called the driving force is from physics, okay? So this is what that did, okay? 
And that did not have a choice except to use this rich curvature tensor uh, to derive the formula. Okay. Uh, all right. So this is a. So what is our next step? You know, you have no idea. Just sitting there, right? So there are a couple of choices uh, we can do. Okay. So when is a pure geometry? Okay. I have to look at first of all. Uh, can we still work on the Riemannian curvature tensor? And what connection of the Riemannian curvature tensor works best or search for the connection, okay? Um, so we can see the, uh, the we can see the, the Riemann curvature tensor of some, okay? Some connection. I don't know as this is a, which one is a, was a good, okay? I don't know which one is good. Okay, uh, just a minute. I think my computer is going to be shut down because no matter. I forgot. Uh, do you remember my password for this class? <laughs> I have to use another one to join. I forgot. Just a second, okay. Shinya, do you not remember uh, what's the password? Can you tell me? <laughs> I should. Password. Ah? Password. Yeah, for this uh, seminar. Uh, uh, 2020. Uh, 2020. Okay, sorry. Okay, I I probably have to switch to the uh, my other computer later if it's it looks like it's charging my computer. Okay, it's okay. Yeah, my other computers cannot log in automatically. Okay, let's continue. All right. So we consider um consider a Riemann curvature tensor of some connection. So first of all, I try to uh, uh, try uh, the bare wall. Okay, bare water connection. Now, why I have to keep emphasize the bare water connection is the best so far. Okay, then you have the Riemann curvature tensor. All right, now we're back, right? <clears throat> yeah, sorry. All right, we continue. I just use a uh, yeah. The, uh, we continue, okay? <clears throat> All right. So the rim uh, uh, for the bare wall connection, the Riemann curvature tensor. Okay, why this is a uh, uh, this is good. Okay, the reason is um, the reason is this has a very nice uh, relationship with uh, with a uh, curvature. Uh, we might call it T index because T index everybody accepts this is a right. Okay, so for this uh, for this curvature we have one third R I K. And this is a uh, uh, this is uh, going to be the the vertical derivative L K and J. You can also written All right. <laughs> okay. 
this. Then we have a very simple um, trivial uh, uh, identity. Is uh, is uh, uh, if uh, R I K right equals K X. Okay, and this is going to be uh, I'm going to use a F square here, delta I K minus and J uh, K M uh, Y M Y I. If and the only F. Okay. If and only if uh, R I J K L equals K X, and that is G J L delta I K and J K delta I L. There's no other uh, uh, connections because remaining curvature tensor has such simple expression when the curvature is isotropic, flat curvature is isotropic. So this is very similar, similar to the remaining case. At least it does not have so many terms, right? For the chain connection, you have addition terms. For for uh, uh, for the chain connection, for the carton connection, you have so many, and many other connections. They always have addition terms. Uh, so this is the simplest form. Okay, I like it. Okay. Another uh, uh, another uh, reason to use a bearwall connection. That's the first reason. Another reason to use bearwall connection is uh, uh, is uh, because uh, if you go beyond Finster geometry to, to spread geometry, there's no matrix there. So bearwall connection is the only kind of option for you. Okay. Anyway, so. If you take a certain average on the Riemann curvature tensor, then you don't worry about. You always get, you know, when it's a when it's a, a isotropic uh, flat curvature, then you always get rich uh, rich curvature curvature tensor isotropic. So, how to define the rich curvature tensor? You have to follow this rule. Is when it is a Riemannian. Uh, uh, if the if a the flat curvature is as sharp, then the rich curvature must be as a sharp. Okay. So uh, the notion of rich curvature tensor is acceptable if okay, if uh, if a flat if the flat curvature um, is of isotropic, yeah, is that isotropic implies the rich curvature tensor is isotropic. Okay, isotropic in the sense, uh, uh, yeah, in the sense, you know, rich IJ cause okay. All right. So then, uh, then you have a uh, two similar notations. Yeah. Okay. The first one, the first one is rich. Um, the first one is uh, is uh, is going to be rich JL, right? Uh, let's go back to the very beginning. The remaining case so we have a uh, two versions of rich. Right, look at this. <clears throat> Two version of rich tensors. So we can use a we use them, you know, you just copy it again. Okay, that makes sense, right? And we are very happy with the bearwall connection. So so we have a two rich tensors defined. Okay. Okay, but uh, I have to use a different notations because I already use a rich I guess I put a bar here. Okay, so rich um Okay, right? but this is a depends on x and y. Another one is I put a circle here, x lower index, upper index. It's a GL and uh, I J K L and the stairs function for one. Okay. So those are the two reasonable uh notion of which and we check whether make whether do they satisfy the above condition. Okay, 
So if uh, if R I K is going to be K X, right? F square delta I K minus J K M Y M Y I, then we use a uh, uh, we use a uh, then uh, then you can have the following. Okay, uh, I'm not going to waste time to do that. So this is going to K X J J L. Okay. And also we have uh, delta i k. Okay, so those are the. Uh, of course, this is equivalent to circle i. Uh, you know, <coughs> circle i k equals uh, n minus one k x j i k. Okay, that's the same. Okay, just pause the index down. Okay, so they are satisfying the criteria. Of, of being which coverage tensor. Okay, so it's a weaker version of uh, switch up S uh, flat coverage. The question is whether they are good or not, right? And how do you start it? Okay. I hope in today's lectures, yeah, we'll summarize again our coverage tensors. And uh, Right, so I think it's pretty reasonable. Nobody serious uh, uh, considers those two possible notions. Okay, there are some difference. Any difference leads to uh, non-limit quantities. Okay, and uh, well, and uh, those two actually already showed up in somewhere. Okay, I think in uh, I remember a long time ago, uh, two. Okay, let me check. Uh, in 2000, actually much earlier, 2011, around that time, maybe 2010, the paper published later. Okay? Uh, I wrote the paper, uh, uh, yeah, I wrote the paper uh, called on the, yeah, let's put the correct published video. On the rich curvature tensor in things that geometry that's why it's first attempt okay and this was uh uh this this was a talk in Moscow uh, uh I attended a conference in general theory theory okay so actually this is a I was attempted to establish it instant uh instant uh, uh first equation And a different one because I don't like the one use the cotton connection. I can now have a yeah. So I did not, uh, I did not define the rich curve tend the tensor. I just derived the field's equation use con Bell connection instead of cotton connection or chain connection to see what I can get. So I end up with uh, another uh, uh, similar. Uh, uh, Okay, and this will be R and two delta I K and here's I. And I have lots of stuff to here. Uh, this is something here, okay? So we get a similar one, okay? And that is also equal to zero when for the Bayward matrix, okay? Now what is R2 then? And this is a, um, this actually is nothing but, uh, I'm surprised just the average, I just realized that this is the average of a rich bar IK plus rich circle IK, just a sum of this above two. Yeah, it is a, it's a, and the, and the R, okay, this R is, is just equal to the average value, okay? The trace of that. Okay. Yeah, this uh I'm gonna put two that here, okay. So make it a difference from what the what the what the chunk uh Lee got, okay. They got uh yeah, it's a notion uh where this yeah, this this is a slight different, right? Yeah, it's different. 
<coughs> all right, just all right. So, well, so this solid is there, okay. So now we want to see uh, any uh, relationship, okay. So you may call this one rich tensor just combinations. I think those two will be the key key quantity, okay. So so clearly. Uh, still, you know, if uh, if uh, R I K, if the fractal is as a chop, right, okay? right. So if the fractal which is as a chop, then we still have that okay? we still have this, right. Yeah, this is a note. Okay. All right. Uh, so uh, what we should do? Should we study reach to the IK or we study that? I think uh, we should study the, for those two basic ones first. There was a, a advantage of this event. Okay? And um, the reach bar IK, Okay, the rich bar K, uh, if you write in the form like this, uh, 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 J, um, yeah, this is uh, uh, the rich bar K, right? Is going to be J I I K, rich J K, right? And this rich J K bar is going to be Riemann. Okay, so this one is defined, can be defined for the other space. Uh, it's not necessarily be uh, the many uh, uh, coverage, okay? Uh, not necessarily, you know, to, to be fin symmetric because coverage, Riemann coverage tends to bear our connections well defined. So this can be, this survived, right? Extend okay, yeah, but which circle I k okay, which circle I k is going to be j j l uh, right uh, I k j l okay, this cannot be extended to strings. I have to say that, okay? So, sounds like a rich bar is more reasonable, acceptable in the future, okay? <laughs> right? So, you, when you introduce the quantity, you want to take average, right? And, uh, and uh, okay. So, well, uh, let me spend a little bit of time on the rich bar first. Okay. Uh, there was a, Interesting quantity in the things uh, 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 geometry. Okay, the thing, uh, before I talk about rich bar, okay, so I have to emphasize that there's an important quantity called uh, uh, xk. Okay, that quantity um, is defined by the following two or three identities. Okay. The quantity, the first definition, let me give a simple one, is going to be, uh, it's defined for any space, okay? Read half of M, M, K, L, Y, L, okay? That's the first. You see, here it does not even involve G, I, J. This is also equal to one over six to R, M, K dot M plus R, and, and, okay, you can you can prove that using identities, okay? using the above identities, how to translate the metric, uh, the coverage tensor was four index to coverage tensor, tensor was two index. Okay, another important uh, identity is this is the S curvature. Okay, 
where it's also is defined for any space, okay? Well, S is uh, S curvature, uh, okay, with respect to any volume form. Okay, since if it's a spray, now you cannot talk about Boltzmann Hausdorff volume form, okay? So you have to take an arbitrary volume form, then define the S curvature, okay? The last one is very important. The why? From the last one, you can see that, okay? Uh, <clears throat> you can see that, yeah, no, first of all, you can see that if, if, uh, uh, yeah, here's a remark, right? So if S curvature is going to be uh, 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 a cruise form, okay, for some, for, for some function, because this property is independent of choice of a particular volume form, okay? Because when you choose different volume form, you, you only change the function f, okay? You don't change, okay? So then when you plug into the above formula, right? Then let's calculate, okay? So f k, yeah, f is going to be f k, you know, dx k, right? F k is a, it's just partial derivative, okay, in the local coordinates. So F k and, uh, and oh, I should have, I should have write F as F k y k, okay, then, uh, then have my k here, okay, so minus, minus F M K Y Y yeah minus Y K okay so you have uh yeah you have this first okay so this is gonna be zero anyway okay it can be symmetric so it can be true all right <clears throat> that's a good part right so so um if F is if uh, if G is bare, okay, not F, yeah. Uh, I have to say, if if the fin symmetric, so F is the bare, okay, uh, the sprays I find is not good enough, it's tricky, yeah. Then in price, S is in DF, okay. So, but you cannot see from here. Uh, if match is bare, I cannot even tell whether this is again is it directed from the first two expressions. <coughs> from the first two expressions, you cannot tell whether they are a zero or not. Okay, whether they are zero or not. Okay, you cannot tell. Actually, uh, if the spread is bare word, I even cannot tell S is DF or not. I don't think so. Okay, if uh, if a G is is alpha, alpha means okay. I'm not sure this is a, uh, yeah. So it's not clear. But I found spring was S is DF. Yeah, maybe. Okay, this is a small, uh, small difference. Okay. Now, so for the fin symmetry, okay. For a fin symmetry, okay. We have additional uh, 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 expression. XK is going to be, half of the mean mean lens book curvature. Okay, so this is a very, very <laughs> important identity. Uh, you know why? Because this, yeah, when they have things symmetric, we, this can be true for general. You know, for positive definite things symmetric, uh, you can, uh, can have a group of theorem using this identity, okay? So here, so example, yeah, for a positive, uh, definite, I have to emphasize that, okay, definite things uh, metric uh, um, a closed, for example, mm -hmm. manifold. Using uh using the above identity was 
xk0, okay, then uh, if the Riemann curvature are negative, <coughs> then f is remaining. Okay, f is remaining. Okay, so frac curvature, I'm saying frac curvature is the same means. Okay, so those two are the same meaning. Right, uh, the reason is uh, uh, along the any complete geodesic, if the Lich, if Riemann curvature is negative, then the Gardon, mean Gardon torsion will be unbounded unless it's zero everywhere. Okay, key idea is using this. Okay, key idea is using this. Okay. So uh, the mean garden torsion along a geodesic okay, is unbounded unless it vanishes. Okay, unless it vanishes. But then, uh, 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 but it's, uh, you know, if it's close to manifold, it must be bounded. So it must vanish in there everywhere. Okay, that's. Uh, Proof. Okay. So this is a uh, uh, this is about uh, the average, right? So now uh, we have the following uh, uh, identity. Okay. Uh, this is a lemma. Actually, this is a lemma was proved uh, a long time ago in the paper with the lead. Okay. So we have the following identity. Okay. So the reach i j. Okay, the difference between uh, the reach, this reach is going to be, remember, this reach is going to be half of the hinging, okay, is equal to, equal to that, okay. Uh, well, you see, so there's a difference, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, this, is, this can be proved using be identity, okay? Now, what that tells you, uh, yeah, this is a, so there's a difference, okay? So from here, you can quickly get the falling property, okay? You can quickly get the falling proposition. It's a trivial proposition. It says that uh, if a uh, if, uh, uh, reach bar ij equals n minus two and kx gij if and only if okay if and only if reach ij equals n minus k right and uh, x uh, x uh, xj x is x k is going to be zero okay so uh and then uh, this is of course it's the same as reach n kx f square all right, so I want to say a few words about that. Last thing, because the proof is a, is a, is a simple. And the, this kind of metric we call the strong Einstein the metric. Okay, in the future. So when you study Einstein metrics, you can use a classical notation, but sometimes always ask yourself if there'll be strong Einstein metrics or not. Okay, so proof, okay. Proof this from here to here is trivial, right? Using the identity, trivial, okay. And uh, from here, it's also trivial, but I want to talk about, okay. So if reach bar ij equals n kx gij, so that implies yi yj equals n minus one kx f squared. But this rich IJ, look at this rich IJ is going to be Riemann, right? Y I Y J. So first of all, this is just a this is just the usual rich curvature. Okay. So then this implies okay. Then you plug into above identity. You know, by by lemma, by above lemma, by star, right? By star, this is important. 
by star xji is going to be zero because the both two sides are the same. Okay. So then you construct y i. Okay. Now if you construct with a uh, do we get a new star? Mm -hmm. Okay. If we construct, uh, yeah, this is going to be uh, x x x j is a homogeneous of uh, uh, x j is a it's a this is a I think it's positive definite. Uh, 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 this is a homogeneous degree one. Okay. Then uh, then this is just x j. Okay. Then this is just x j. All right, so, so that implies this thing. Okay, then that. Okay. A uh, few words about uh, that's a strong Einstein. Okay, so there are many example Einstein matrix actually is a strong Einstein. So here's my remark. Many uh, Einstein matrix. Okay, instant matrix, that means which n minus one k f square are actually strong instant matrix. But, but so when you get a result, you maybe check whether x k is x k is zero. Uh, in a few minutes, I'm going to talk about the other one. The other one, I just want to simply, I don't know what is the other relation. Okay? I simply just uh, introduce a new quantity I'm going to talk about. Okay? This is a rich uh, circle, okay? Rich circle ij minus, uh, minus rich ij. I wanted to see the difference. Okay, of course, this is still, a non-limited quantity, okay? It is a non-limited quantity. Okay, because for remaining metric, those two are set, okay? For the remaining metric, those are 10, okay? So that means uh, it's a non-limited quantity, okay? Uh, the problem is, what is that quantity, okay? Now, what is that quantity? Uh, using Biakan identity, okay? So I'm going to, this is a, this is a defined, right? This quantity, you know, it's harder to tell. So this is a, 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 a J I, J I M, right? Reach I M, okay? And uh, you can, um, uh, the second quantity is just reach, right? Uh, J, this is M, J, right? So you can use, uh, express the using the, using the, uh, yeah, let's see, this is J, uh, KL, Re, Riemann curvature, KL, right? And this will be just a Riemann curvature, uh, uh, M, M, I, J, right? So express that you have a double matrix, uh, G, I, J here in front of rich coach thing. So it's harder to tell when it's going to be zero, okay? But in the remaining case, this must be zero, okay? But uh, in general, it's not going to be zero. So we try to express it in slightly different form, okay? We like the different forms. So now, how do you do that? Okay, how do we do that? Okay, I try to. Uh, I hope. Uh, I hope this this one is uh, is some vertical derivative. Another one is like uh, is this is going to be a, some vertical derivative, or right. And we don't know. Yeah, if otherwise, this will be much better. Okay. okay. By 
reacting identity in sensor geometry, we have very important uh, uh, theory identity. This is a Bayward, uh, this is Lenzberg curvature. Okay. It's going to be negative half of GIM So this is a star, okay, let's call it. And this one is very interesting identity. So they're both sides equal. I'm gonna denote the by IJKL, that's simply, you know, otherwise if you copy that, okay. This, uh, this set up IJKL, that's a four index here. The left hand side involves scattered torsion and the lens curve. Right hand side involves the remaining curve. Okay. Okay. So we contract with star with JK. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. I, 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 I construct that, put two here, and, uh, and uh, IJKL is going to be uh, using the right hand side, okay? JK. Okay. Uh, after you calculate, yeah, what do you got? Actually, you got the following, the first one, JK. So you change the, the index KL. So this is going to be LK, okay? Minus, and this, and that will be Delta KM, okay? And then those two combined is just JM, Reach circle JK. Uh, so circle uh, ML, sorry, ML. Okay. And this one is just equal to reach I ML. Okay. So you will get circle IL minus reach IL, uh, this bar. So this is a difference of it, okay? But we also have, I don't like which part involved here. So what we got here, uh, this is a reach IL minus XL dot I, okay? Remember, right? This is a, this can be replaced by this too, okay? This is what we have here, right? So then we get the following formula, IL equals Twice of a GK, a GKL plus XLI. Okay. Now, I haven't used the right hand side. The right hand side is going to be twice of a GK, as the right hand side is IJK. Uh, this is uh, going to be uh, a GKL, right? So, yeah, so this will be L. Okay, and plus yeah. so minus L I J L K plus C I J M R M K L plus X L I. So this part is nothing to do with the remaining uh, 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 curvature. Okay, and uh, and uh, so this is another expression. Okay. It's another expression in terms of uh, non-limited quantities. So that's so far we have. And uh, and uh, easily can check that I L Y L equals negative X I. If we contract with the first index, will be X L. Okay. 
And this also implies T I J Y I Y J is going to be zero. All right. Now, okay. Using this identity, okay. Using this above identity, you get this too. Okay. This this is the expression in product. Then let's go back to. Uh, let's go back to this, right? So we contract with both sides with I, Y, L. Yeah, this is zero. So it's now it's it's clear that we still have the following identity. Uh, uh, so the reach can be expressed in terms of okay, I, J. Y I Y J that's trivial. Then we also have this. That's that's already almost trivial. The last one is not trivial, okay. Honestly, that's why we took a long time to figure it out. All right, so not too bad, right? Okay. And using this identity, you at least you can prove the following proposition. Okay, so reach circle ij equals n minus k x j i j if and only if reach plus t i j equals zero okay and um, i think the, let's give a proof this is a trivial okay this one is not trivial but until you got a theorem lemma if you use this above lemma, it's trivial because uh, uh, above lemma tells you uh, reach equals n minus one k f square, then reach i j equals n minus k g i j. Then uh, uh, then uh, uh, you put um, put the above identity, right? Reach circle i j equals reach i j plus t i j, right? So those two are the same, right? So this implies TIJ must be zero. Now, when TIJ is zero and what kind of condition, we don't know. Okay, so we, we so finally, we can study uh, uh, Finsler matrix with TIJ equals zero. I think we're almost done with the random symmetry. We haven't studied as it's almost done for random symmetries, okay? It's complicated. And this TIJ, I cannot, so far can I express like a, the above one, can express as a vertical derivative of some quantity, okay? So, the, uh, uh, so TIJ is going to be something IJ or something JI, partial derivatives, it's not clear. Okay, maybe derived as identities maybe still true. We don't know. Okay. But then maybe not. Okay, it's not the important. So we get this uh, uh, curvature and non limited quantity. So this non limited quantity, I think it was to study. It, okay. <clears throat> and uh, that's all my one lecture. Okay. We, we spend about more than one hour now. Uh, let me.